Hi everyone, may you be inspired, learn something new, or simply relax while watching. We're going to use these colours, this pink, it was created from the crimson and titanium white. This is Purple Lake and the Cadmium Yellow Hue. The blue I wanted to see if I could get a bit of a shimmer into that so the cobalt blue and a bit of silver. It worked a little bit but nothing like I actually hoped and this is the emerald green. So these colours are mixed with something new for me. It's the clear PVA from Montmartre. And I'm trialing the mix of 70% of the glue and 30% water and mixing it at equal parts with the paint. I'm just going to add some silicon to three of the colours and now start layering the cuts. So as you can see in there, um, I'm layering the colours the same way um, however what was the second no third color in the first cup was the second color in the second cup so it's just slightly off step but still aiming to use the same layering color by color um, except for that section so because um, we are trying out this new mixture I thought it would be great to just do a flip cup and so now while I'm just waiting for that paint to settle and you don't have to wait that's completely up to you uh, I just thought it was a good time to clean off the sticks so that they can dry out and be reused and let as much paint drain out of the cups while I'm just doing that. So this one here is an 8 by 10 canvas. I did get a little overexcited and completely skipped the step of preparing the back of it. Um, so I haven't, I normally use a masking tape and some push pins at the back to raise it up off the table and I got overexcited and just jumped straight to it. So you can see following the actual uh, the action of releasing the flip cup I ended up running the lip of the cup through which is uh, what Karen from Waterfall Acrylics has um, used this as a flip and lip and I really like the effect that those extra lines create and it also does bring up some extra colour that's hidden underneath. So now just tilting, trying to keep as much paint on the canvas as possible at this point until I know that the entire surface and sides are covered. So using my hand kind of as a corner catcher to catch that paint and make sure it goes down the sides. So at this point, um, you just let it sit for a moment and then torch it and see what reactions come up through both processes. Not much came up during the just letting it sit, um, but once I used the torch, you could see the cells that came up from the silicon and you can see some areas where there's not a lot of cells and some areas like especially to that right hand side where it's just like a real abundance of cells so while you're looking at this and determining what you like what you don't like um, this is where you can choose to tilt it off and see what happens 
from there. So I do feel like that right hand side was really busy and potentially that bottom right hand corner as well. I love the brightness that there is on like two thirds of it. So if we just get off these bits, tilt off these sections that kind of feel possibly a little muddy and overcrowded with cells. But then at the same time, um, you do have to be careful of the cells you have already created that you don't over tilt and they become out of shape. Like I have some little jellyfish looking cells and everything there now because I took my focus off what was happening elsewhere on the painting and just where I was, and um, it was just on where I was tilting. So just using a little balloon now to see if I can create some beautiful flowery um, insect type effects. So using the balloon dip. I love how that yellow came through in that section. So just placing the balloon, giving a little push down and a slow release back up. And especially with those cells, it creates that dragging which makes it look like those petal type shape shapes or wing like shapes. So they could be little fairies, little dragonflies, butterflies, or flowers, or little starbursts. Like sometimes when you do the balloon dip another time, you can bring up other colors. And other times, um, you may realize you've gone too far. And that one is a prime example. <laughs> but again, oh my gosh, I love that top left one. So that's how we're going to leave this one for now. And see what else we can do. But we'll have a close up first. There's the not so pretty balloon anymore. This one I love. I love that yellow that came through. This one reminds me of a dragonfly. And then we have a flower. So you can see the colors, the cells. It's all looking really good. I love this little outlining of these cells here. That would be awesome to achieve more of that again. So, Alright, so that's how it looks wet. And Alright. So the thing is, there was a second cup, if you remember. And when I went to do it, I completely forgot to hit record. I set everything up and didn't hit record. Um, and at this point now, because this was last week, I don't even remember what technique it was. Um, but I didn't like the results of it. So I ended up rolling a balloon through it a couple of times on different angles. Just to see what that would do. Because it's got the silicon in it as well. So I'm not thrilled with it, but this is a really good test with this new mixture that I'm using. So here is the one from the video, all dry, absolutely beautiful. I think I would, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I think I'd like to embellish this one somehow. Um, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'll leave it to dry. A little bit longer before I know what that is. <clears throat> Sorry, I think I need to drink. Wow. All right. So I'm really happy with the consistency that I got from the paints and how they dried. I just need to practice with these a little bit more um, to get used to using a different medium mixture. Alright, so there they both are.
thanks so much for watching please subscribe like comment and share and thank you i appreciate you all be kind be creative and be fabulous bye